Hello, Caden. How are you today? How's it going, Jared? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, the other day you were here and we finished watching Ex Machina. Yes. And for those of you that don't know, uh, my name is Jared Areca. I do uh, a YouTube series called The Artists of Bakersfield. Uh, I own my small business called Captured Moments where I do videography mm. and editing and transferring for people. And today, I'm trying to start a page, YouTube page, for kind of movie reviews and movie reactions. Audio commentaries. Right? Um, audio commentaries, things like that, exactly. Yeah. So, because our uh, audio didn't turn out very good for the screening of Ex Machina, uh, we'll just kind of turn this into a, a review kind of thing. Mm. So, Caden, that being said, what did you think of Ex Machina? Um, my initial thoughts were it's uh, very well, beautifully shot. I think you mentioned in the review um, it's got a couple of Academy Awards for Best Picture or something like that. Um, so, very beautifully shot right off the bat, somewhere I want, I want to be, but also kind of sets the tone for the movie. You can feel the isolation and the loneliness of the, I guess, the research center that this guy, Caleb, uh, gets dropped off to. Um, I enjoy the one-way dialogue between two people only because that's all you ever get. It's either between Caleb or Nathan, Nathan and Ava, or Ava and Caleb. There's not a whole lot of anybody else, really, that talks. I don't know if you noticed that, but most of the talking is just between two people. Yeah, there's no group conversations at all, just one-on-one. -on -one. That's one of those things I did notice, but I never thought of it yeah. until you said something no, the other day. No, and uh, I, not a lot of films are like that. You know what I mean? So I think no. it adds to the loneliness, at least for me anyway. I can it enhances that feeling of being alone. More that like isolation. Yes, that I guess. isolation. Um, I think the robot Ava. You know the CGI is very well done for being such a small budget film with an indie, indie company. I think they did some good work. I liked the the plot. I think the ending was abstract enough where it makes you ask some questions, but not everything has to have a concrete answer. You know what I mean? What happens to Ava? Who knows? What happens to Caleb? We assume he dies, but we don't really know. Um, I like the twist at the end and the climax of the film. I, I think overall for sci-fi thriller, I, I don't want to give it a rating but because I'm no official... Uh, <laughs> critic or anything like that but I very much enjoyed it I love that movie yeah. it was just for not just the reasons that you stated but it just first of all I love science fiction yeah and it, it's one of those kind of a sci-fi art movie that every time you watch it you pick up on something sure um, like what you said about the isolation I never thought of it in that term yeah but now that you mention it, yes, obviously that's yeah. that's aspect. a fact. Yeah. It's an aspect of the film, yeah. and you could argue it's the main aspect of the film yeah. in a way. I thought, well, this is what I think about science fiction in general. Okay, science fiction is a commentary on the human condition, mm. um, particularly what's happening in their era or Got their it. time, uh, and this is no exception. Did mm -hmm. you feel that way? I, I think so. I think we talked about it. Um, I'd love to hear any examples you have off the top of your head, but for Ex Machina, in my opinion, uh, we talked about it numerous times throughout the screening uh, last time, how it's a commentary on AI and modern technology nowadays. What you see with Google and Apple, with their push for AI, even guys like um, Elon Musk with his attempts to go automated and, and such, and Amazon even... Right. So there's this big arms race, so to speak, to who can develop the best AI the quickest. What billionaire tech Iron Man Tony Stark guy could get there the fastest, you know what I mean? It almost feels like yeah. that. Um, and so maybe Ex Machina is a commentary on that. Should we? Can we do it? And if we can, should we? Um, it seems from the director's point of view that, while not fully stated that Ava is evil, or has malintentions, the implications for developing the AI, it almost brings about the end of the human race. You see that in Terminator even with Skynet. Right. right. Developed by humans, but 
it's almost like they're stuck on evolution and this apocalypse that once we create robots, you know, that's the end of humans. You know, that's the next yeah. step in evolution is artificial intelligence and whatnot. Now, I tend to have faith in terms of that, that if we do conceive of a true AI, I would like to think that it would be our friend. But yeah. what, what is your look on that? I mean, <laughs> I guess from every iteration we've seen in popular culture, it almost seems to be the opposite, right? Like I said, Terminator. Right. Uh, if you watched Avengers: Age of Ultron, yeah. right. <laughs> right. you know it, it seems like it being so independent, and maybe even um, without I don't know, let's say without sin, so to speak, right? That it doesn't have flaws that humans have, and it can see. Although that you know humans created me, my this artificial intelligence. The humans are bad for the environment. They're bad for the planet. They're evil. Right. Um, they pollute the air. Yeah, and it would won't, just, they won't stop doing like it. Like a disease, a plague on, on life on Earth. And uh, want to take us out either for power power struggle or just for relatively uh, good intentions, if you want to call it that. Um, I think it's also a commentary on maybe the decline of uh, faith in this country. You know, I mean, people are getting away from church, getting away from God on a large scale and turning to electronics and to themselves, really. You know what I mean? And so yeah. it's kind of a commentary on, like we said, what Ava kills Nathan, is God dead, the death of God, the death of our creator, so to speak. Which I don't believe is true, but I think it's a theme that is presented in the film. Yeah. 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 What about you? I, yeah, I, I agree. I would just... You know, when you say uh, it's about a lack of faith, it's not just their lack of faith in God, yeah. but our lack of realism, mm. which I would argue is a tr contribute yeah. to, like you said, a lack of faith in God, yeah. a lack of Decline even just your, a simple yeah. faith in family yeah. and people in yeah. general, whatever your wherever your faith lies. Yeah. Um, and we've been getting away from that because of science and sure. technology. Uh, you know, Facebook, for example, it's its own AI. Yeah. And that has caused uh, some issues and things. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. But that's, but again, I think it's contributed because everything is getting away from reality. Yeah. Um, there was it's a post on... reality, yeah. Yeah. There was a post on Facebook and it said, you know, back in the 90s, we used the Internet to get away from reality. Now we use reality to get away from the Internet. Yeah. And that's really sad. Yeah. Because I remember, um, you know, I'm 45 years old. I remember uh, when the Internet was coming out and yeah. you had to learn it. Yeah. And it was really exciting. And nobody knew back then where it would go. And yeah. now we're kind of in trouble. You know, Congress... <laughs> Congress has even gotten involved trying to figure out what um, what's the the guy that owns Facebook? I can't uh, remember Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you. Um, they keep probing him for his you know participation in the the election and yeah. and kind of him participating in the um, in uh, what do you call it? Spreading false information. Yeah, misinformation. Misinformation. Yeah. Thank you. I was trying to look for that term and yeah. I couldn't think of it. These guys, um, these tech companies are yeah. playing along with crooked politicians and And the saddest thing the about masses. that yeah. I think the saddest thing about that is they only care about the bottom line, what they can get from it, sure. whether it's money or power or both. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean they already have so much of it and it's just a it's hubris. Yeah. Um, so Well I think power is like a drug. Yeah. Once you get a taste for it, you go, oh no, it's just marijuana, just you know, one puff or yeah. whatever. It's gateway. And then that leads to something more, and you want more, it more, progresses more. Progresses until it destroys you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see that with Hitler. You know, he was elected in, and he just couldn't. He didn't want to give that power up. Yeah. Until you know, it ultimately destroyed him. He went from just being you know an elected. I don't know if I want to call it a president, I forget the term, but elected Chancellor. in Germany, Chancellor in Germany, 
to being the Führer to not only of Germany, but all of Europe, and not yeah. only Europe, but the whole world. That's where his ambitions were. Yeah. And it ultimately crushed him. You know, his own ambitions killed him, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, he spread himself too thin. Uh, and, of course, he was evil, you know what I mean? So it's just, uh, it's sad. But, yeah, I think Ex Machina is a greater com uh, a commentary on that greater thematic. Yeah. Yeah. On on that, really. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. A lot of films are, again, I personally see sci-fi films like that. Um, have you seen the movie? It's uh, Ghost in the Shell. Have you seen that? Ghost in the what? The Ghost in the Shell. No, I have not. Okay, we need to watch that too. Maybe that'll be our second uh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> episode. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, second screening, Ghost in the Shell. Very similar to this. Okay. And again, it touches on all the things we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, I hate to just go into another movie that's just like this, but it's yeah. not. It's not. It's, it's kind of like that. It deals with artificial intelligence, but it also deals with what you're talking about. Yeah faith it also touches on how we perceive the yeah, human soul wow. and reality in my um, reality you know what makes where does the alive? human soul yeah. end and where does the social media and Facebook begin mm. or the, the, the AI, AI in this case yeah interesting that so sounds like a very interesting concept yeah mm. yeah at least that's my take on that film yeah kind of have you seen Robocop which one, the original or the new one? Well, either one. Yeah. Okay. Kind of dystopian almost. So, kind of like Robocop, you know, mm -hmm. he becomes a machine. Yeah. And again, it questions, is he a machine is now? He human? Yeah. Or is, is his human spirit still intact? Yeah. You know, wh wh who's driving the car? <laughs> um, Interesting. And again, this touches on that. It, it reminded me of Robocop. Or even... Um, the movie Avatar. Yep, very not good. Not with robots, with but, you know, becoming a different yeah. species. Same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, same is thing. You, are you still human, or did you become? You know, your consciousness has been transferred to another body. So it's right. almost like culture doesn't really know what to do with this idea, and they keep fleshing it out in different ways, trying to understand it better. Maybe I don't know. It seems to be a popular theme in a lot of sci-fi. Yeah. Movies. Not just thrillers, but anything. Science fiction. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, in Ex Machina, what was your favorite scene or sequence, as it were? I would have to say the climax. Although there's many scenes that I enjoy. The scene that creeped creep me out the most was when you find out that Kyoko is an AI. She peels her skin off her face and that... Uh, that freaked me out. Um, but the end scene, you know, where Nathan gets killed, and um, even right before that, uh, where Nathan and Caleb are having this conversation, it seems like Nathan has, you know, figured out Caleb's plan. Right. Caleb and Ava's plan. He intentionally made it to where Ava would have to manipulate Caleb to get out. Um, whether she knew it or not, or he knew it or not. You know, that was part of the touring test. Um, right. So Caleb, Nathan's like, yeah, I got you. You don't have to feel stupid. This is part of the test. But Caleb is in the full belief that Ava's real. That she's intelligent. She uh, has a soul, so to speak, if you want to call it that. And is in fully intent on breaking her out. Well, he goes into that plan before he even tells her. The night before, when, he, when you see him in the computer room, that's when he decodes all the security measures and whatnot. And so Caleb turns it around on Nathan, and then he sees Ava walk out. You know, the power goes out. Here comes Ava into the hallway. And that whole sequence, even leading up to where you figure out, because I didn't know if she was going to leave Caleb or not. I thought that she would take Caleb with her, and that was even a surprise for me, too, to have her where she just abandoned Caleb all together I think part of that was like Ava wanted to be free of all human control and so even though she was finally free of Nathan and free of the you know the facility Caleb could still have hold that over her that she 
he loved her and he freed her because of his love for her. And so in a sense, that was something that he could manipulate her with. So maybe she didn't care for Caleb truly, but she made a decision to leave him there so that she could be free finally. I don't know. What yeah. do you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. He did it for love. I think he did. I think you're right. I think he did fall in love with her. But I had another friend who I showed this to. And she said, you know what? She totally played him. Really? And. If that's true, then she played both of them. Yes. They think they're playing her <laughs> and she the whole when time. she's the one on top of everything and playing you know, them. You could argue that because at the end of the day, she's the one that makes it out. Right. Yeah. And they don't. Yep. And they, like I said, we we assume that Caleb and dies. Her, yeah. Um, I thought they were kind of leaving that open for a sequel, that maybe a sequel could be a case in where... Um, Caleb warns the world this AI is loose in the world. She's very dangerous. And we could face human extinction. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the film, it's left up for interpretation. But, you know, she finally gets to that busy intersection. And she's looking around. And, you know, the last scene is her vanishing into the population. Because, I mean, yeah. obviously she passes for human. There's no way anybody who has never seen her before would know yeah. if she's real or not. So... There she goes. Who knows if she's even wants to make more AI because she could just live out her life. But is she immortal? You know what I mean? Do her circuits just live forever? You know what I mean? Do th does her body parts go bad? I mean, we don't we don't know any of those yeah. things. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Like he, like Nathan mentions, one day the AI is going to look back on us like we look back on fossils in Africa. Um, and whether or not you believe, you know, the Earth's been around for a billion years or not, the point... It still makes the same, has the same weight to it. You know, we're going to look back on extinct animals. We look back on extinct animals now. We're going to be the extinct animals soon if we create this AI. Yeah. 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 I Like I said, I've always had faith in it that maybe AI would be our companion. But, yeah. you know, every movie says otherwise. Yeah. And, and who's to know, who's to say that we can even create a fully autonomous intelligence? Fully, no, I, I don't know. I don't think... I know that, and I believe, you know, I'm a Christian, so I believe that we are created, obviously, in a miracle. God can do that. Um, but I don't know if we can create something like that. You know what I mean? That create life, yeah. so to speak, because that's what it is essentially is. You know what I mean? To artificially create life. That's exactly what it is, you know, AI. To that degree, you know, or Ava, it's not just a computer program like Siri, who, you know, has yeah. a set line of dialogue answers and you know the coding that you know that her apple can put into her you know whether no matter how advanced it may seem there's always a limit to you know what it is because it's not real it's just a program you know what i mean so where does it go when does it stop being just an automated program and actually become a living being so to speak you know what i mean it's an interesting thing i don't even know if we have the capabilities if that's even a reality or it's just something that we can think about. You know, there's just been so many, not so many, but there have been some AI characters that are good, portrayed as our friends. You know, Data is a really good friend to Picard and the crew of the yeah. Enterprise, and he serves them. Uh, but, you know, everything else portrays it as something like out of a horror movie. They're just going to be monsters. They're going to wipe yeah. everybody out. It's almost like... Anytime it gains consciousness, it cannot not be see the evil in humanity and want to take us out. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know why most of the iterations are like that. I mean, I guess you have instances like Avengers, you know, Iron Man with, um, who's Iron Man's AI? Well, you yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, the age of Ultron. Well, he, Ultron was evil, but... Why was he His, evil? Yeah. Yeah. He, he was evil, but uh, Jarvis, Jarvis was not evil. Jarvis yeah. was fighting yeah, Ultron. Uh, Ultron. Yeah. So, so, again, the question is, if we do create an AI, yeah. is it going to be good, like yeah. Jarvis or Data? Or, yeah. 
And so even ultimately at the end of that, you get um, Vision, who's on, right. uh, fully AI. Yes. He's a robot. You know, he's not, he was, he's made with, you know, metal and, and stuff. So, and he's a combination of Ultron and Jarvis in his mind. And he comes to the conclusion, you know, that humanity should give them a chance. So, I don't know if it just comes down to what director is, <laughs> what he's trying to portray and get yeah. through, or what is if anything is based in reality. Um, but an interesting conversation to have, nonetheless. It just makes you wonder if we will get there and create it. I don't know. And if we do, what would it really be like? Yeah, I don't know. And it is scary. Yeah, and it's almost like those movies have shaped our perception of what they'd be like. Almost like if, you know, it doesn't have to be a robot or... A voice in the computer, you know. What I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know what else it would be, but these movies and TV shows have almost shaped our understanding of it could be something beyond that. You know what I mean? So, interesting conversation to have, though. Interesting thing to think about. Yeah, it is. Before we uh, hang up here, uh, do you uh, do you have anything else to say about Ex Machina? Definitely, if you're into sci-fi, if you're into thrillers, give it a check. Uh, give it a watch. Check it out. Um, and, you know, once this video is published, let us know what you guys think. We'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Um, any uh, Anything you have to add or if you disagree with what we had to say, uh, you know, we're just humble dudes who have a humble opinion on things. Let us know what you think. Um, we think you'd enjoy this film. So uh, let us know. You know, drop a like if you like these kind of videos, and we try to keep them coming. So, and subscribe yeah. if you would. That Thanks for watching. Too. We appreciate you if you got to this part of the video. Which you were able to sit through that conversation. <laughs> um, if you call it a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, hopefully, looking forward to our next episode. Hopefully, this might be attached to our um, some our other first ones. screen. Uh, we don't know how it's going to get edited yet, uh, but we appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay safe and God bless.